there are a certain number of deer breeders that uh, are breeding for the best in the in the world, and uh, I'm in in that bunch that's trying to accomplish that. I'm not saying I am the best. I just I, I love big deer and I love good genetics. I want to tell y'all something. We're in the Show Me State. This is Darren Deckard. He's speaking to Show Me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at this frame. It's been a while since I caught a fish, and yesterday, <laughs> I may need to catch one. <laughs> this program is dedicated to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. May God bless America. Today's Americans are more disconnected with nature than any time in history. This disconnect has led to a society that is unaware of the importance of conservation of our natural resources. Fortunately, there are modern-day heroes who are still in touch with nature, and they work to protect wildlife and wildlife habitat for future generations. You won't believe what I got Keith Warren doing. Those stories are told here on Keith Warren's Deer and Wildlife Stories. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, Schrade Knives, New Dart, the North American Deer Farmers Association, DNA Solutions and North American Deer Registry, Record Rack, Whitetail Sales and Service, Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles, New Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center and the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance Foundation. We're about 12 miles east of Springfield, Missouri, uh, about two miles off interstate uh, near the Branson, Missouri area. This, like everybody else, has started out as a hobby and has become an obsession. There are a certain number of deer breeders that uh, are breeding for the best in the, in the world, and uh, I'm in, in that bunch that's trying to accomplish that. I'm not saying I am the best, I just, I, I love big deer and I love good genetics. These, Keith, these strips that I put up here, I, from the time they're born, they have to walk under here, so they're not afraid of it at all but I built this wide enough to accommodate the tank and I used to spray them right. to keep diesel and permectrin on it. Mm -hmm. But I just take a bucket, I dip them down in there, let them drain and put them back up there. And every time a deer walks through there, it rubs it down their back, down their horns. And just that odor from that diesel and permectrin, I mean, it just keeps flies off of them. You'll see none of my deer have flies at all. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people use this up north, and uh, I've never seen it done in Texas, but I promise you, I'm gonna have that done on my place. Where are they, Darren? Right where we'd be, in the shade. In the air conditioning? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna go in the buck pen here. Every deer in here is a yearling or a two-year-old. Okay. Uh, I've got one yearling I'm really proud of. He's a Hydrax son out of a high racker doe. He just got an incredible frame on him. A lot of people have stopped by in the past few days to see him. Uh, he, he isn't quite done finished out, but uh, we'll get a good look at him here in a minute. It's, it's 100 degrees out, so I don't know how hungry he'll be. We'll try to get him to eat some leaves. I want to tell you all something. We're in the Show Me State. This is Darren Deckard, and he's fixing to show me. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Buck. Come on, Buck. Oh, my God. That's the yearling right there. Oh, my Gosh, look at his frame. That is a yearling. Yes, sir. That is his first set of antlers. Mm -hmm. He's 18 months, well, he's not, not quite 18 months old. Oh my gosh, folks, look at that. Look at that deer. He's got such a giant frame on him. And right now, it is, uh, what is his first week of August? Third of August today. Yeah, and so he's got some way, you can see the end of his antlers, see how bulby they are? He's still got some growing to do. Wow, that was worth a drive up here just to see that now. I mean, as a yearling buck, and, and you know, a lot of guys are going for that non-typical look, you know, kind of freaky and stuff. He's got a basic, typical frame. That's beautiful. 
it is amazing that when you start dealing with good pedigrees, you know, right. good, good pedigrees, what happens? I mean, all deer are not created equal. It's just like all people are not created equal. I mean, they want to say that, but you know what? Genetically, we're not. You know, there's some tall ones and short right. ones and strong ones and weak ones and right over there. He's a he's a strong one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people that are first getting into this, the biggest mistake they can make is buying cheap deer. Yeah, I mean, you get what you pay for. Right. You really do, and a lot of guys, when they get in the deer business, they just want to get in the deer business because they love deer, and they don't want to spend the money. Well, let me tell you something. It costs just as much money to feed a deer that is not going to get big as it does a deer that's going to get big. So when I look at it, everybody's got limited resources, and why not spend your money on big stuff like yeah. that? The biggest thing I can tell you is don't get too quick about buying your first deer. Visit several farms. Get to know the people, find out how they stand behind the deer that they sell, what kind of health the herd's in. Just pay a lot of attention, learn as much as you can before you get started in it. If you're interested in uh, becoming a deer farmer, you won't meet any more friendly people out there. And guys like Darren and his family are all over the country and uh, they'd be happy to show you the deer. All you gotta do is give them a call. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories, I know this is a deer and wildlife story, but that's, that's kind of, to me, that big old catfish is wildlife. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Been a while since I caught a fish, and yesterday. <laughs> I may need to catch one. <laughs> we'll be right back. I was born and raised here. Uh, I, I kind of am partial to this area. I, I go all over the United States and there's some beautiful parts of the country, but it just seems like home. Here comes one right there. I can see the water pushing. Oh look, look at this. Hunter, kill that. Look at the size of that channel cat right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know this is a deer and wildlife story, but that's, that's kind of, to me, that big old catfish is wildlife. That's pretty cool. Look, they're coming up underneath it now. You can actually see them start to feed on that pelletized feed there. Look at that, look at the size of that catfish there. Hello, big daddy. Oh my. You know what I think's funny? How many people would be sitting at home going, man, I'd like to catch him right there. <laughs> but those same people at home may be saying, I wouldn't hunt behind a high fence for nothing. I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> what's the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah, they're or pretty I trapped. Wouldn't, I wouldn't hunt over bait. <laughs> really? What would you like, like to catch these fish? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Y'all are wondering what's that on the water, that little filmy stuff, that's pollen. But look at them. That's pretty cool. You know that I'm gonna have to find a rod and reel, don't you? Well, we got some up there if you wanna. I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to see if I can still do that. I, <laughs> it's been a while since I caught a fish. Like, yesterday. <laughs> I, I may need to catch one. <laughs> I, I love talking deer as much as anything. Uh, I love showing people that are just getting started into it different little things that I've learned and, and most of them I've learned from somebody else. I've worked on my genetics really ever since I got started, but really hard for the past six or seven years. And, and it's just amazing, you know, how, how quickly you notice a change in your herd when, when you're upgrading. Your youngest deer should always be your best deer because you've taken a, a pedigree like this and crossed it with an equally strong pedigree, and now it's like this. Well, the next time you cross, it should be twice that big. It's, uh, it adds up in a hurry. Uh, I went down and stayed with Keith a couple of days. Uh, had a lot of fun, always having fun around Keith. Uh, he's probably out the catfish pond. Once he seen that, I knew, knew we'd be losing him for a while. <laughs> I look for the common denominator that all deer breeders have, and it seems like uh, not only it's the love of nature, and but it's the commitment to their families. I don't know of a deer breeder one that just doesn't uh, uh, embrace nature with their family and getting kids outdoors is what it's all about and deer farms have ponds on them and squirrels and rabbits and not just deer but all kinds of things to get kids outside and it's those things that get kids outside that get them connected to nature and will help them be better Americans. 
Oh, I couldn't do it without my wife and kids. Uh, we got babies to bottle feed. If, if I'm traveling to an auction or a show, uh, they feed the big deer, they feed the little deer, they make sure everything's okay. I mean, it's a team effort, there's no doubt about it. I couldn't do it all by myself. We also have some horses. They're, they're kind of my wife's passion. She helps with the deer too, but uh, we've got one, one horse out there that uh, got pretty excited when we told him Keith was coming. And uh, it's actually a girl, I think she's got a crush on him, but we're gonna let him spend some time with her. <laughs> Howdy. This is deer breeding at its finest. Deer breeding allows people the opportunity to live a life that people in the city just can't live. You're connected with nature, you're connected better with your family and the real world, and it's all because of white-tailed deer. And I just think that is so cool. You know, my goal is to help the industry as much as help myself. If somebody's dedicated and, and into it, they can do it. And, uh, you know, give it a try and, uh, if you're, if you're thinking about, there's so many people that, that I meet and they say, really, you raise deer? Boy, I'd love to do that. You know, my, my advice is do it. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories. What we do here is uh, we make uh, remote drug delivery equipment for the animal control industry. If you would like information on becoming a deer breeder, the North American Deer Farmers Association can help. Log on today. We'll be right back. What we do here is uh, we make uh, remote drug delivery equipment for the animal control industry. In a free-ranging environment, and even in a captive environment, it's best served to, to deliver the, the drugs or the medication remotely, which uh, provides an opportunity to, to aid and assist in, in the event that the animal is, is of, of medical need. The various models that we, that we make available to the public today are your basic air-activated uh, pneumatic uh, projectors. Uh, we also take a, a Marlin 22 and retrofit it you know, to, to adapt to the cartridge-fired environment where you use a little nail gun charge. And then we've recently migrated into a gauge CO2 system, uh, both in a pistol and a rifle, um, which is a born and bred application here. Um, and with those, we find that uh, we've been able to adapt to the variety of needs, regardless of which industry or which species that uh, the dart needs to be delivered. What, one of the, uh, the values that we try to stress to all of our consumers is that it's not a point and shoot endeavor. It, it is not a, a product that you can simply pick off, off the shelf and, and walk into the field and, and successfully deliver a dart. In fact, we discourage that. We would like to see people interact with uh, educational institutions, uh, those that have the uh, pharmacology background and degrees to, to provide the insight in, in using the different medications appropriately for the different species. Uh, it, it's, it's a rare commodity, but it's, it's a precious commodity. Our customers range from a variety of, of, of uh, walks of life, and, and that's probably one of the things that's helped, uh, helped us stay and, and, and maintain the, the level of success that we've been able to achieve over our four-year history. Um, we're looking at uh, your, your cattle industry, your, your, your cervid market, uh, your small animal control, veterinarians, uh, your zoo um, professionals, your wildlife agencies, both at the state and the federal level. So it's a rather eclectic group that is really distributed across the, across the globe. The, the different species that our product is used on is indeed a, a list from A to Z. Um, some of your problem black bears that you may find in, the, in your local communities. Um, on an international scale, we found a great deal of interest in our product down in South Africa. Um, a variety of species, whether it be uh, um, darting a white rhino for relocation efforts in a, in a, in a conservative um, conservationist type move, or uh, bleasbuck, or 
Gem Gemsbach or polar bears, doing some polar bear studies up in, uh, in the Arctic, um, you name it. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's A to Z. What we do here is, is, is primarily a, um, a start to finish, uh, as I like to refer to it. Um, it. And we are proud to say that one of the few com companies in at least this, this part of the world that manufactures and creates a product that is all a more American born and, uh, born and bred. Every component of every element that we use in our equipment today is, 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 is from America. Um, with that said, um, we, we ship our equipment to the far reaches of the world. I mean, we have distributors in South Africa, Israel, Australia, Canada, uh, a number of distributors here in the U.S. We do sell direct to the consumer. Um, in fact, about 80% of our market share is serviced uh, from a point of sale that takes place just on the opposite side of that wall. Our customer base uh, is a long list of, of valued, uh, valued uh, clients, and uh, they've been with us for as much as, as 40 years. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories. This comes to us from a fellow by the name of Lance right down the road in Seguin, Texas. Keith, how many deer are generally in a deer breeding program, and of those, how many are main breeder bucks? We'll be right back. This week's viewer email is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles. This comes to us from a fellow by the name of Lance right down the road in Seguin, Texas. Keith, how many deer are generally in a deer breeding program, and of those, how many are main breeder bucks? Lance, uh, you can have as few as one deer in a breeding program, or I know guys that have hundreds of deer. So that's the cool thing about being a deer breeder. You don't have to have a lot of deer. And, uh, or you can have a lot of deer. You, there's not a certain uh, number of animals that you have to have. As far as how many bucks do you need? Uh, breeder bucks, I breed one buck for every 12 does. And the reason why is because I don't want the bucks to get too physically stressed from the, uh, from the rut. And so 12 does per buck, and you can have as few as one or as many as you want. If you have a question for Keith, you can submit an email by logging on to KeithWarren.net. Now a word from the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance in this week's conservation message. Almost every hunter dreams of taking a trophy buck. Unfortunately, all too often, that dream never becomes a reality. On land where hunts are unguided and unmanaged, the average age of a white-tailed deer killed in many states is only one and a half years old. This is akin to a teenager cut down before they've had a chance to live. This sad statistic applies largely to unguided hunters on unmanaged lands. They're anxious for the kill, and they don't have the experience or the discipline not to shoot. Their mentality is, if I don't kill him, someone else will. Unfortunately, this mindless eradication of immature bucks undermines everyone's dream of getting a trophy buck. Due to the overharvest of young bucks, most hunters, well, they've never seen a buck that's five years of age or more. Believe it or not, when a true, mature buck steps out, there is no doubt. It's something you'll never forget. The key to increasing your odds for taking an older buck is to hunt smart. All deer hunters should learn to judge the physical and behavioral differences between an adolescent deer and a mature buck. By passing on a one and a half or two and a half year old buck this year, you set the stage for bigger bucks next year. As hunters, we should all be working toward a bigger and better herd. Those hunters who exercise a little patience and a few habitat management techniques today will help everyone reap rewards tomorrow. The reality is that sometimes, well, you have to pass on a few bucks to get that trophy buck of your dreams. If you would like to know more about what the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance can do for the future of the outdoors, log on to DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. If you would like more information on today's featured operation, log on to their website or give them a call. If you would like to know more about the show and Keith Warren, log on to KeithWarren.net. 
coming up next week on Deer and Wildlife Stories. We're in North Texas up in Montague County at Sullivan Whitetails. You know, every one of these uh, deer farms that we go to, we try to look for something that's unusual. The most unusual thing and special thing about this place is the fact that Brad Sullivan, the owner, and the man that runs it have been friends since they were five years old. And I think that's awesome, and you're gonna love this story. I think one of the things that sets us apart is just mine and Jeff's relationship. You know, being best friends since we were six years old, the trust that, uh, that I have in him is such a key to our operation. Uh, we always take pride in not doing what's right, but doing more than right for the customers that we deal with. Who is, I mean, look at the frame on him. That's a two-year-old buck? Big is that Gatorade? Frame. That's Gatorade. Okay, well, I've heard about Gatorade. I mean, look at him. He's the man in this pen. The, the whitetail deer industry has really turned some of these old farms around that the people, they couldn't make a living doing what they were doing. But now that the whitetail deer industry is doing what it's doing, it's, it's made a big difference. For an interactive experience and to see last week's show in its entirety, visit our website.